Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Homeland Security Training Institute podcast. I'm your host, Tom Brady, the Associate Dean for the Homeland Security Training Institute and Public Services Division here at the College of DuPage. If you're a new listener to our podcast, welcome. Glad to have you. If you're a regular listener to our podcast, thank you so much for listening. Every week we try to put together a show where we talk to people who are experts in some occupation related to Homeland Security. We try to bring on the the best guests that we can find, and today is no exception. Today is like going home for me because I have the honor of speaking with Julie Kenny with the United States Postal Inspection Service. Julie is the Public Information Representative with the Chicago Division of the United States Postal Inspection Service, which is the law enforcement and security arm of the Postal Service. Ms. Kenny is a strong supporter of the Postal Inspection Service Fraud Prevention Program as she routinely conducts presentations to educate the American public about current frauds and scams. In her role as a public information representative, Ms. Kenny responds to all media inquiries regarding inspection service investigations. She writes press releases and media advisories and often works with local and federal law enforcement on joint investigation messaging. Ms. Kenny has been with the Postal Service for 31 years, of which the last eight years have been with the Postal Inspection Service. And Julie, welcome to the Homeland Security Training Institute podcast. Well, thank you. It's great to be here, Tom. It's really great to have you in here. So the listeners out there know that I was a postal inspector. Um, I I spent 26 years with the United States Postal Inspection Service, Mm -hmm. which I consider to be the greatest federal law enforcement agency in the world. It is the greatest law enforcement agency in the world. Absolutely. And we're going to talk a little bit about that and just as to why they are so great. But when we were, when I was the inspector in charge of the Chicago division, I actually hired Julie in her position. So it's been, it's been great being able to still have a contact with her. And I know how passionate and how hard she works. So, Julie, it's just, it's just great to see you, and it's great to have you back here on the podcast. Well, thank you, Tom. And it's like going home for me as well, because we worked a radio show together where you were the host. <laughs> That's right. And then when you retired, I eventually became the radio show host of the Don't Fall For It show. And I miss it. I do. It was a great um, way to get a message across to talk about the different fraud schemes and let people know what's going on out there. Well, I worked closely with you on the Don't Fall For It show for several years. Mm -hmm. Um, What a wonderful program for a federal law enforcement agency to have a radio show. That's the only one that I'm aware of that was actually good um, that a federal federal law enforcement agency um, hosted. Um, So tell me, Julie, if you will, about what were your thoughts on a federal law enforcement agency having their own radio show, the impact that that would have? Well, it was really out of the box uh, thinking for us to have something like that. And the Postal Inspection Service has a great message to tell people. We do a lot of um, fraud prevention, and you could reach so many more people at one time through a radio show. And did you know the Postal Inspection Service also has a television show? I did not know that. Every Saturday morning, it's called The Inspectors. Okay. It's on. It was on at C, on CBS 1030 in the morning on Saturday. It tells a message because it talks about real live Postal Inspection Service investigations. Okay. So people are aware of what's going on and how people could be defrauded and what they can do to protect themselves. So, um, yeah, it's great for the Postal Inspection Service to do things like this. You know, it's really neat that the Inspection Service is, um, you know, forward thinking enough to do some creative things like that because I don't know a lot of other agencies. Okay, yeah, you got NCIS, oh, okay, and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> but, but the show was on Saturday mornings. Is it, was it, is it a cartoon or is it like live action? Oh, it, it's not a cartoon. Okay. But I'll tell you, there's no, you're not going to see guns drawn. You're not going to see stuff like that just because of the, the audience. It right. might have younger viewers. Sure. A lot of seniors watch it. Whenever okay. I do presentations, I'll always ask the audience, who has heard of the inspector's show in the morning? And, you know, they're all raising their hands and they're telling me they love it. They even watch the reruns. Really? Um, Because there's a lot of different types of casework that inspectors investigate. People don't realize it. Yeah, I think that, you know, when you are able to put out something on television and tell a story, I think it makes the the, the agency 
um, a lot better to understand, you know, for the type of work that they do. And the inspection service has done a lot of different types of investigations, which we're going to get into here in a minute. Mm -hmm. But I also want people to know that the Postal Inspection Service is arguably the oldest federal law enforcement agency in this country. So uh, all you listeners, if you want to win a bet with your friends, you can ask them, who is the oldest federal law enforcement agency in the United States? And if they answered the Postal Inspection Service, well, then you owe them a beer or a beverage of their <laughs> choice, I guess. But it is the Postal Inspection Service. So tell Julie, can you tell our listeners a little bit about how the Postal Inspection Service, how, how it started? Absolutely. Um, Benjamin Franklin actually started the Postal Inspection Service. He um, was a postmaster general way back when, and somebody needed to secure the mail. So the Postal Inspection Service protects the mail, and it protects the postal employees. It protects postal infrastructure against uh, dangerous or misuse. Um, the Postal Inspection Service protects now 600,000 postal employees who move the mail every day and the millions of customers who use the mail every day. People don't realize, I mean, the mail touches everyone's life. Mm -hmm. So criminals will use that to further a crime or to commit a crime. Yeah. So the Postal Inspection Service has been along, around a long time, and it was needed to safeguard the mail. You know, stage back way back when, they had stagecoach robberies. That's right. Pony and, Express. Um, the Pony Express. <laughs> and That's right. So the Postal Inspection Service was created at that time to protect the mail. So... As federal law enforcement agents, you know, we carry firearms, we make arrests, mm -hmm. do all those things just like any other federal law enforcement agency. So back when Ben Franklin started them, did they did they carry like muskets like with them back in the day? I mean, what, what, <laughs> I would imagine what, they what did. What kind of kind of firepower did they have? They were heavily armed, I'm sure, right? <laughs> Whatever. With something. <laughs> right, sure. with something. <laughs> so the uh, you talk about uh, the 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 creation of, of postal inspectors when they began. And I think that's really, really, to me, I'm a history buff. So that's always been real interesting um, to me. And the Postal Inspection Service, so first of all, the Postal Service does not receive taxpayer dollars. We absolutely do not receive not, tax none, none, not, a, not a penny. Not one cent from American taxpayers. All m revenue for the Postal Service is brought upon by the sales of stamps. Okay. So when somebody buys a postage stamp, that helps um, the Postal Service. So the Postal Inspection Service is really, if I buy a stamp and put it on an envelope, mm -hmm. I can get guaranteed that the Postal Inspection Service is the agency that will protect that piece of mail. Because it's pretty amazing when you drop a piece of mail in a collection box up in Maine, I'm sending it to Los Angeles. That's a long way to go across the country. Uh, it's protected by the U.S. Postal Inspection Service. Absolutely protected. The Postal Inspection Service is the security that comes with the stamp. And I absolutely love that saying because it's true. If somebody mails an in, um, a counterfeit check or a fake invoice or somebody orders a, equipment and they don't receive it, the Postal Inspection Service is, could investigate that. And they're pretty good, from what I mean, from what I, I know. And they're very good. They're, I mean, they, I think they have close to a ninety-nine percent conviction rate. I mean, I know it's 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 pretty astronomical um, the success that they've had, and that's good to know. I mean, it's comforting to know for people that use the U.S. Postal Service that there's a federal law enforcement agency standing behind that stamp, and I think that that I mean that just brings an image that I think is pretty cool. Absolutely. So like you mentioned, federal um, postal inspectors are federal agents. They carry firearms. They make arrests, um, conduct search warrants, serve federal subpoenas. A lot of people haven't heard of the Postal Inspection Service, and that's because years ago they were known as the silent service. Oh, uh, that's right. And I think they did that because they didn't want to associate danger or crime with the mail. Yeah. People just didn't know, you know, um, nowadays, we want to get the message out there. We want people to know. This way, it'll give them an opportunity to protect themselves or prevent being victimized by some of these scammers out there. And really important information for the American public to know. Yeah, absolutely. And I do remember, Julie, when I was working for the inspection service, that I, I had heard that, too, that back in the day, they were the silent service. And that always didn't sit well with me because I, I, I always thought we should be the really loud, boisterous inspection service, you know, because... Back in the day, they didn't 
they didn't really want, they're very humble in terms of the work they do, and they, and they still are. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they wanted to f- kind of fly under the radar. You know, inspectors came in, did their job. When when the inspectors were, when, when the postmaster would tell their people, post inspectors are coming to the office today, it would strike fear in their hearts and all that kind of stuff. Right. Only because of the, the, the professionalism, I think, associated with that agency. So I think, I think from a historical perspective, it certainly is one of the, uh, the, 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 the true federal agencies that have a long history and that are very well respected by not only the American public, but by postal employees as well. They're also respected by other law enforcement agencies. We work with the FBI, we work with the ATF, local police, and they love working with the Postal Inspection Service because they know that every T is crossed, every I is dotted, Mm -hmm. and our success rate is extremely high, like you said. Phenomenal, phenomenal. The Postal Inspection Service is one of the smaller federal agencies. We have about 1,300 postal inspectors nationwide. Whoa, 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 whoa. stop the clock. (laughs) Yep. 1,300 nationwide. Yes, yes, only 1,300, yes. Holy moly. Mighty 1,300, I'm telling you, yeah, that's that's so small. It is, it is. Smaller than I think when I left, you know? Um. I think it's actually more. I think when you oh, left, it was see, about twelve hundred. That's and because we have... <laughs> a lot more people were interested in taking my job. You know, so that's why. We also have a uh, uniformed security force, the postal police officers. We have about six hundred of them across the country as well. And what do they do? Um, the postal police officers pr- protect the local post offices, usually the larger post offices. Okay. So some of the bigger post offices across across the country have postal police officers. In Chicago, we have about 60 postal police officers. Okay. And in the Postal Inspection Service, we also have a s- administrative staff, which I am part of that. There's okay. about 600 of us across the country, and that okay. includes our general analysts, our technicians, our forensic uh, laboratory that we have. Right. But there's only two public information representatives left across the country. Wait a minute, really? Yes. There's only two? There's only two of so us. So where's the other one? Uh, in New York. New York, okay. Yes, New, New York, York and, and Chicago. Chicago. Mm-hmm. Wow, mm-hmm. That's, I didn't know that. Yeah, we started out with about six, and now we have two. Wow. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a great job. I love being a public information representative. I meet a lot of people. I get to do things like this. Yeah, you know, and and you know, it's been you you've been so good in that role. Oh, I mean, thank I you. know that when I worked with you, the work that you did to put together the behind the scenes thing of a radio show. If anyone out there doesn't know what goes into making put a weekly radio show, a weekly live radio show, Julie Kenny can tell you because it's a lot of work and 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 you really did a great job of bringing people in who were excited about coming on and talking about what they did. Right. Absolutely. Um, it was very rewarding. Mm-hmm. I met a lot of people, and like I said, we got the word out about a lot of different fraud schemes. People would call into the radio show and say, I've never heard of that. Thank you for telling me. Or nice. because I listened to the Don't Fall For It show, I knew that that was a scam and I didn't fall for it. So that, that was the best thing to hear, because then you know you're doing the right thing. You know... I've always been I've always wondered this and maybe you can answer it for me that I know you do a lot of of work on um protecting consumers um and educating consumers why is the postal inspection service so fixated on protecting groups of consumers like for example senior citizens I mean you've done so much work in that area of getting out there and educating senior citizens because oftentimes they're victimized can you talk about that and and what it means to you and what it means to the organization absolutely seniors are so vulnerable so it really it really makes me sad to see them being victimized like this by these scammers because they they believe the scammers when they get these phone calls or these letters in the mail it means a lot to me knowing that I'm helping somebody from being scammed. I do a lot of fraud prevention uh, presentations to different senior groups. So if people do want somebody to come in and talk about it, they can call the Postal Inspection Service. You can't arrest everybody out there that is perpetrating all these crimes. You Why just not? You just can't. There's just so many of them, Tom. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah, that. Yeah, I know. So the best means of prevention really is to talk about it and educate the public about these schemes. So we say that education is the best means of uh, prevention. 
It's almost like a it's almost like a weapon. You know, I mean, I always think about education as for for seniors to protect themselves. It's almost like a weapon they have. Like I'm 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 sorry, but I'm I'm really smart. I hang up the phone, or I'm sorry, but I knew this was a scam because I heard about it. And I don't fall for it. Right. Or Julie Kenny, I was at a, a presentation she made, and she said this. And I think it's interesting when you hear that, and especially when you said you heard it from people on the radio. It just tells you that it's important to people. It absolutely is important to people to get the word out and and share this message that these scams are happening. Because when I go and talk to people, people are shaking their head. I'm never going to fall for that. I'm never going to fall for that. I know that that's a scam. Well, millions of people are falling for these all different types of scams. Well, as you know, there's a lot of different fraud schemes out there, and we could talk a little bit about that. Yeah. But you, you, of course, you're going to think, I will never fall for it. I'll know that that's a scam. But I'll tell you, that's not true. It's so easy. These scammers are good at what they do. Yeah. That is their job. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, they are working to scam another person. And sometimes it's hard to detect it. And right. especially the older that people get, it's harder to detect fraud. And I think that's probably why these uh, scammers, are they focus on them, you know, because Absolutely. they know that maybe the the, 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 the senior citizen is not going to report it or they'll forget about it or whatever. That's what they think. Right. You know? And when seniors have this education um, and are alerted to the fact that there's these scams out there, they can really protect themselves and others as well. And. Absolutely. Another message that we're getting out to the public is for family members to work with their elderly family members, to go to the neighbor's house if they're elderly, to share the message about these scams. We have to protect our elderly, um, our senior citizens, our elderly family members from this type of uh, scam. We have to watch out for them. Absolutely. And there's no question about that. You know, you mentioned that anybody can, can, can fall for these scams. And the people that say, oh, I'll never fall for that. And I think they actually use that same voice. Oh, I'll yep. never fall. <laughs> um, you know, I think if you remember, and you'll probably remember this, I think the 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 person that had that I remember the most out of when we did the Don't Fall for a radio show was uh, um, she came in, victim of a romance scam, a doctor. Oh, a yes. Doctor. So here's a, a woman who came in on the show um, who was uh, um, scammed by somebody – perpetrating, I think, someone who's in the military, a, a, a man in the military. Now, of course, this is all coming from overseas, mm-hmm. but she started a, a, you know, dialogue with this person electronically, and then she was scammed for, I think, a whole bunch of money. But it just goes to show you that here's a doctor, you know, falling for something like this. So anybody can fall for these frauds and scams. And I think that's the message you got to get out there because for the person who says, well, that's not going to happen to me in that voice. Um, <laughs> I think they have to understand that, yes, it can happen to you. You know, it can happen to anyone. Absolutely. This being scammed, uh, there's no discrimination when it comes to these scammers and who they're going to scam. Doctors, lawyers, teachers, um, stay-at-home moms, students. Students mm-hmm. are huge when it comes to, you know, like financial aid scams, right. um, education scams, scholarship scams. Interesting enough, millennials get scammed even more than seniors. Really? And I and that's that's pretty new that uh, that mm-hmm. information came out. And it's because I think everything is done on a smartphone. Everything is done, you know, and and the virus is getting downloaded into your computer, the malware and all this stuff, where a lot of senior citizens don't use the computer. True. Um, They use the mail, they use uh, the phone, but they don't use the computer. So the Internet um, presents a lot of other problems now. I think that that's interesting because I think social media has changed the world we live in. Yes. And I think you're right. I think think millennials, I mean, that's that's really their world and they're connected to that every day, you know. And and look at how much crime could be – perpetrated at a computer because you never see the person that you're dealing with. You don't know who's on the other end of that computer. Even even on the other end of a telephone, you don't know. But the computer, it's just so much crime can happen and you never even meet the person. I know. And they can sit there and they can commit all these different types of crimes or try to commit crimes. Right. And, you know, I think if they try to, you know, fish someone or do a phishing scam, which is the PH phishing, 
um, they're trying to get as many people to fall for it as they can. So they're sending out thousands of these emails. Someone's going to fall for it, you know, somewhere, yes. some, someone somewhere in the world will fall, fall for it. And then that person will be sitting in their basement and they, you know, it, it's, they're just continue to perpetrate their crime. Right. And that, like you said, they could send out 10,000 emails and hoping, you know, three people will take the bite and send them $5,000. So, you know, if three people did, that'd be $15,000. That'd be a pretty good day for those scammers. Absolutely. You know, one of the things, Julie, I wanted to ask you about, you know, one of the, um, I saw on, I don't know if it was on 60 Minutes or I saw a, a news piece not too long ago. Um, and I know the inspection service was mentioned on it because they're doing so much work with opi- opioids coming into this country through the mail. Yes. And um, do, you, do you have any like cases you, you've worked with, you know, opioids or fentanyl or anything like that? Yes. We I actually wanted to talk about a case um, with the opioids that the Postal Inspection Service worked. And actually it was in the Chicago Division. Okay. The Chicago Division encompasses a large territory. It is um, all of Wisconsin, all of Illinois, and parts of Missouri. Okay. So we have inspectors in Wisconsin that um, was working a case where somebody overdosed with opioids, um, fentanyl. They received a package in the mail that had a nasal spray in it. Mm. And the nasal spray actually had a deadly fentanyl derivative in it. And one of our postal inspectors was contacted by local law enforcement. The victim in the case died 20 minutes after receiving this package. Oh, gosh. Uh, Right? Very Mm. scary. So the Postal Inspection Service immediately uh, started this investigation, and through the use of multiple investigative tools and techniques, which we can't talk about, um, the mailer was identified. A mailer sent this victim some nasal spray that had this uh, fentanyl in it, which he had ordered off the dark web. Okay. And through the course of the investigation, we uncovered other parcels that were mailed, and it also had this nasal spray in there. And so through the Postal Inspection Service quick actions, um, we probably saved other people from overdosing from that fentanyl. The guy who was mailing these packages was sentenced to 12 years in federal prison. Okay. This just happened in January 2019. Wow. Right. So the victim in that case... Died 20 minutes after receiving the package. Right. Sprayed right. sprayed it and died and almost died instantly. Almost instantly. He oh, used a so nasal horrible. spray that he had ordered online that had drugs in it. He knew what he was getting, but it had the fentanyl, and that's what killed him. Oh, that's just horrible. It is. Yeah. But So the Postal Inspection Service is taking these drug packages very seriously, these investigations. Um, we're doing a lot of investigative work, trying to get them out of the mail. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's dangerous for postal employees as well. Right, right. They're handling the mail. Exactly. And you got to think about them too, because exactly. they're the ones that are making the deliveries. You know, I, I often said that I think I think scams. See if you agree with me on this, Julie. I think scams are are really tied up in two ways for people to fall victim to these scams. I think I think one is if if it's if it's tied up in emotion, and then the other one is just it's just greed. I think people are just like. These sweepstakes people that I think they're going to win a million dollars and they keep sending money overseas. And it, that's just all about greed to me, you know. So those two things to me stick out the most. Well, you're absolutely right about that. The grandparent scam, it, people are played up, their emotions are played with. They're usually called late at night or early in the morning and they have to help their family member or their family member is going to be put in jail or hurt or they're in the hospital. So the Postal Inspection Service will get involved in something like that if the, the money mailed. Is, is mailed. Okay. Right. The case has to have a nexus to the mail for the Postal Inspection Service to get involved. Okay. And a lot of times in the shipping industry, that they're, the nexus is there, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, one of the biggest fraud schemes that probably is going on is that is deals with uh, the emotions is the romance scam. Oh, that's still going on? It's still going on, Tom. <laughs> it's still going on. Man. It's going on a lot. Oh, gosh. In fact, the Postal Inspection Service investigated, the Chicago Division Postal Inspection Service investigated a case out of St. Louis um, where this man 
He has been preying on women from 2007 to 2014, um, pretending to be American soldiers. Oh. Yes, it's it's the worst kind. But he also um, scammed these women out of millions of dollars. Wow. Some of them lost everything. Some of them lost, you know, their retirements, their homes. Some of them contemplated suicide. Oh it, it's just, it's devastating. He got 27 years in prison. Wow. 27 years in prison. Prison, And wow. he was from Nigeria. Okay. So he was extradited back to the United States for this case. And that's pretty rare, right? It doesn't happen very often where people are extradited from these countries. It's rare, but it is happening. We Good. do have postal inspectors in Nigeria. We have yeah. postal inspectors in Jamaica and Canada. And we work with their law enforcement. Good. And we get these people to come back to the United States, and we do prosecute. So 27 years is significant. That is really significant. But the, what the judge in that case had said, and I thought this was really interesting, he said that that crime was the most devastating crime one could ever imagine without ever laying hands or even eyes on another human being. Boy. Because it was all perpetrated through the computer. Right. That's 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 unbelievable that, you know— um that many people became victimized by this yes, person. Yes, it, it was sad, very sad. But, and you know, and people are psychologically affected, emotionally, mm -hmm. you know, and monetarily. Absolutely. You know, yeah. financially affected, and it, it's devastating, yeah. devastating. Julie, I want to talk a little bit about a mail theft. And mail theft is, is one of the bread and butter crimes that uh, postal inspectors will work. Um, I know that you guys are doing a lot of prevention efforts as related to mail theft. Can you can you speak to that? Mail theft occurs if people leave their mail in their mailbox for long periods of time. So we do have some prevention messaging that we would like to get out. So we, we ask that postal customers remove the mail from their mailbox soon after delivery. Makes sense. You know, if they can. Sure. If you're going to mail a letter, don't leave it in your mailbox overnight. We ask that you bring it maybe to the post office or give it to your mail carrier. So you don't put the flag up in your mailbox? and Well, no, we, we, you could put your flag up, but as long as it's done before the mail carrier comes for the day and not leaving it there overnight, because okay. okay. that's just kind of inviting trouble, possibly. Sure. We ask to prevent mail theft that... Um, you put your mail on hold when you go on vacation. We right. do have you can do all this online as well. Change of address. If you, if you did not put in a change of address and you receive a letter in the mail from the postal service saying that you your address has been changed. Oh. That you need to notify the postal service right away and the postal inspection service. Well, that's something that would be a, a shocker, you know. To come right. Home, come, come home and find out that you moved <laughs> or you 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 someone's changed your address and 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 that still happens nowadays? Uh, it's happening a little bit. Not often. Um, a very small percentage of that type of mail theft occurs, but it does happen. But also, um, if you're going to have a package delivered to your house, because we know everyone's ordering packages online. Nobody right. goes to the stores anymore. Right. And if you're expecting something, make sure you're going you're to be home to bring that package in the house to receive that package. Sure. You know, you can make arrangements to have a neighbor pick it up or have the post office hold it at the, you know, at the post office until you can pick it up. If you leave it sitting on your porch, they have what they call porch pirates that go up and down the street sometimes after delivery has been made through the postal service, UPS, FedEx, any type of Amazon, yeah. any type of delivery service. So oh. if you order something, make sure you're going to be home to retrieve it. Well, that's 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 good advice because, yes. you know, the, I've See, yeah, I, I've gone on YouTube and I've seen videos. Everyone has like a, a, a camera in their doorbell or in their somewhere. Right. Their, so I, you see a lot of videos now of people, you know, going to those houses and stealing packages. I guess the the, the porch pirates that you, you mentioned. Right. I, but you, there's, I've seen so many videos of that. But the, so that's a great tip. Well, thank you. Um, we also ask if you're going to be depositing mail in a collection box, a blue collection box, do it before the last pickup of the day. Or again, you know, okay. bring it to the post office or bring it, uh, hand it to your mail carrier. Does someone steal those collection boxes? Or does someone, can some people go in there and steal mail from them? It's difficult to do, but there's criminals out there that try. Figure out ways. They figure out a way. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it, it's best if you put the mail in the mailbox before the last pickup of the day. Well, Julie, this has certainly been a trip down memory lane for me. 
Um, and I really do appreciate you being on here. I, I do have one one final question for you. So when we were working on the Don't Fall For It show, do you have one guest that was your favorite all the time that we did that? When we did the Don't Fall For It show, I absolutely loved having Bill Curtis on. Oh, <laughs> Bill Curtis was great. Bill right? Curtis was great. He was a lot of fun, and his voice was just, it's legendary. Yeah, it was. I, it, I was as soon as he comes on, it's like that that silky voice, you know, right? Bill Curtis. It's like, oh, that, that, that guy was in the Anchorman, you know. I remember him from that, you know. But yep. he was, he was that's, a, that's, a, that's a good one. It is. And I did want to talk about uh, one other thing. The Postal Inspection Service will investigate crimes when the mail is used to commit a crime, like mm-hmm. like we had said. We investigated a home repair fraud scheme years ago okay. with the Sullivan brothers who were convicted in Chicago. Um, they were sentenced to 14 years. It was brothers. They were each okay. sentenced to, to 14 years. So they were coming to people's homes and telling them they were going to do all this work. They might start the project but never finish it. And they would have people refinance their homes, take mm. loans out, uh, second mortgages against their homes. And the checks would go directly to these men. Wow. So we did investigate a case like that. So, you know, some prevention tips. If you're going to be getting home repairs done, don't pay them all up front. You know, pay them maybe a little bit in the beginning, a little bit in the middle, a little bit in the end. Um, And, you know, if you're going to be doing work and you're going to be looking for people online, um, you you can't always believe what you read, you know, through the internet. You don't know who's on the other end of that computer. Right. So never send money or wire money to somebody that you have not met in person. Oh, well, that's a good tip. It, really, For even sure. if even if you're hiring somebody to do some work around your home, don't don't ever wire money to somebody you haven't met. Right. I think those are great tips. Um, this continues to go on. I mean, it's still a problem. Right. So what's the best defense for people is to is to know how to deal with it. So that that's great information, Julie. Thank you. And share this information with your relatives and your neighbors. Let people know what's going on out there, because the more they're aware of these fraud schemes, the less likely they will be uh, victimized by it. Right. If people wanted to get in touch with the Postal Inspection Service, who, who do they who do they contact? You can go online. Uh, it's very easy. You can look up postal inspectors, or you can go to uspis.gov, mm-hmm. or you can call us at 877-876-2455. You can report of being a victim of a crime. You can report if you get something in the mail and you're just not sure about. Mm-hmm. You can you know just call us. And it is vital to report being victimized because. Right. That's the way that we could, that we know what's going on. That way, we know uh, maybe it's in a concentrated area. We'll know where these crimes are occurring. Right. Yeah, I think that it's um, it's great to be able to reach out to somebody because some people just don't know. Exactly. They'll go, hey, is this something? But you can always call and call the postal inspection service and, and ask. Right. Good information, Julie. You are a wealth of information. You really are. And well, thank you. <laughs> you are. And I want to thank you for coming on to the Homeland Security Training Institute podcast and uh, sharing some of your your experience and your expertise with us today. Well, anytime. If you'd like me to come back and talk about any particular fraud scheme, I would be more than happy to do that. Well, I'd be happy to have you back. This is Again, this is a trip down memory lane for me. We, we work together, and it's been great uh, having you on and connecting with you again and talking about the great work that the United States Postal Inspection Service is doing. Well, thank you. And we'd like to say you can be a target of a fraud scheme, but you do not have to be a victim. That's right. You do not have to be a victim. So remember that. That's that's really good information to leave with our listeners. And with that, I would like to thank our listeners for joining us today on the HSTI podcast. We look forward to having you on the show again as we bring in other experts to talk about areas that you are definitely interested in because we want you to be safe and we want you to be to understand what to do in the event uh, something bad may happen. So thank you for listening. We look forward to talking to you again. And everybody, please take care. See ya.